Air. Hey, yo, this is LAZ, man. Now, I mean, I already know what today is. My favorite day. Now, I mean, it's a throwback joint right here. This is about how when I first went up north, went to downstate, I got into a little incident. Now, I mean, got caught with a ratchet and got sent to the crazy house where I almost really went crazy. Long story. But, now, I mean, kick back. Comment gang, let's get busy, Slim Blunt gang. Y'all know what it is, Gen Pop in the building. You heard Brownsville, Brooklyn, LAZ, let's get it. I remember when they finally called me from Rikers Island to go upstate, go up north with the big boys, you heard? Like I said, I was in adolescence. So in New York, you can be charged as an adult at 16 years old. In other places, dudes don't get sent to the big house until they 21 some spots 18 but most places not 16 in new york state you can go to a maxi max prison at 16 years old and that law needs to be changed that law was put into effect because of willie bostic leave a comment if you know who willie bostic is willie bostic is considered the most dangerous inmate in the state of New York Corrections. That 16 year old law where you could be charged as an adult at 16 in New York, that law was put into effect because of him. Because at like 14, he did one of the most heinous crimes in the history of New York at the time. Like, killed some dude on a train, shot a mad time, tried to rob, he was a maniac at 14 years old doing all type of crazy shit. Look up Willie Bostic. So basically, because of the shit he did in the streets of New York, they said enough is enough. We gotta start charging these dudes as adults for these crimes. So they changed the law. And since then, at 16 years old, you could be charged as an adult and sent to regular state prison and given life. You could get straight life at 16 years old in New York State. So in New York, it's different, you heard? 16 years old, you going to the Maxi Max with the grown 40 year old killers. So you act up in them streets, nigga, just let it be known. And it, you ain't going to no juvenile jail. You ain't going to no kid spot. You going to an adult prison, you heard? Even spots like Green, there's a lot of young motherfuckers there, and adolescents there, but it's an adult prison because at 16, you are technically an adult in the eyes of the law in New York State. So on Rikers Island, you know, when you going up north, it's a big deal. Everybody coming up to you, yo, my nigga. Now I mean, be safe. We love you. You know what I mean? Niggas giving you pounds and hugs. Now I mean? Niggas asking you for the shit that you can't take with you because you can't take shit but like your Bible. You feel what I'm saying? So niggas be writing all their phone numbers and addresses and shit like that in their little Bible because... You can't, they can't take your Bible from you. You feel what I'm saying? So, I remember them niggas took me to the pens to go up north. Like, it was mad niggas in there. Mad niggas. I remember, I mean, I just remember coming in the pen, like 75% of the niggas that was in there was black niggas. I was like, damn. And the rest was Spanish niggas. I was like, damn. This shit crazy, you feel me? And I was a little kid. And you know, the island is always just, at this time, they used to have adults in the four building too on the other side of the four building. Like, and I mean, you will see adults sometimes, but they wasn't housed in the same houses that adolescents was housed in, but they was on the other side of the building. You feel me? So it was mad adults in there that was also going up north. You know me, I'm looking like the youngest nigga on the planet earth. I'm the youngest looking dude out of everybody. Niggas is like, damn shorty, you going up north? How much time you got? I'm like, yo, I got three to nine, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? You know niggas was missing for me. Like, yo, you gonna you gonna be good, shorty. You gonna be home in three years. Now I mean, matter of fact, at the like, you know, Rikers Island, a year is only eight months. So a lot of niggas who never been up north, they go up north thinking that up north is only eight months a year. I was one of those niggas. Yo, it's only eight months a year, right? Niggas like, nah, my nigga, up north is different. You understand what I'm saying? If them niggas could make you do 13 months out the year, they'll make you do 13. He was like, you got to do the whole 12. So now I'm like, damn, man, I thought I was only going to do eight months a year. Niggas is like, hell no, my nigga. But you know, niggas like, yo, you probably going to make your board. This is before Pataki came in office officially. 
You feel what I'm saying? When he probably when he was just running. So boom, I mean, eventually that bus come get us, nigga. Dudes is going up north, all that wild shit and beef. Like it'll still pop off in those pins going up north, but dudes be too busy worried about where they gonna go and where they gonna end up. You feel what I'm saying? What's gonna happen when they get to where they going? Like, so it be a different kind of energy when niggas is going up top. Like, everybody be feeling brotherly. Like, you feel what I'm saying? We in this together, niggas. We getting on that motherfucking bus together. That bus come take us to downstate. Them niggas lining everybody up, putting the black box and the shackles on niggas with the box. Who I heard, um, I heard that box was invented by an inmate. Leave a comment if you know some history about that. The black box that they lock around the handcuffs so that you can't break through the handcuffs. Nigga said an inmate invented that shit. So boom. Now I mean, like I said, they piling us up. They throwing them leg shackles on me. Like this is the first time I had them up north shackles on me. Where them throw, they throw them shits on your ankles, around your waist. Getting shackled like a, like a murderer. You feel what I'm saying? Getting ready to go on that up north bus. So a few motherfuckers who done been up north before, they like, yo, if you got a violent crime, you gonna go to downstate most likely. If you got a non-violent drug case or something light like that, you gonna go to Ulster. They piled us on that bus and we thought we was going for a long ass ride. That shit wasn't long at all. Downstate was like an hour away or something like that. Or well, that's what it seemed like when we pulled up. Cause when we pulled up, that shit was quick. I'm like, damn, that quick niggas take you from the city corrections to the state corrections in a, in a snap of a finger like that and once the niggas turn you on turn you over to downstate that shit different because when you come up in there you come up in downstate with your personal clothes from the island because on rikers island at the time you could wear all your personal clothes that's why it was so much cuttings and fights because niggas was coming in there with levers and you understand what I'm saying expensive shit fly shit ballys and wild shit back in the days and niggas was getting cut and stabbed for the for them clothes you feel me? Niggas was getting raw for them clothes. That's why now they don't allow shit like that. But in downstate at this time, they let you come through with your shit. Like, know what I mean? They want you to come through with your shit so that they could strip you down. So they could take your identity. That shit is a psychological tactic. It's psychological warfare. They bring you in there. You got your clothes. Your hairstyle is, is your identity. It was, it's what makes you you. So they want you to come in there with your own personal style. You understand what I'm saying? Your swag, your type of sneakers that you was rocking. And they strip that shit from you, nigga, and you never see it again. And then they motherfucking shave all that hair off your head, throw you in the shower, throw that light shit on your head like you a fucking farm animal. You understand what I'm saying? And they put all y'all niggas in the same shit, state greens. If you don't order the right size and you don't know no better, niggas will give you mad tight shit. You be walking around with tight ass state greens. Soon as you come up top, it's not a good look, my nigga. You don't want to go to the max jail with some tight state greens on. So they don't tell you nothing. They don't be like, yo, these shit's fit tight. You be like, yo, nah, wear 36 or whatever. Niggas give you a 36, nigga. That shit be skin tight like a 34. You feel me? Now you go into the max jail with the skin tight greens on looking sexy. It's not a good look. You feel what I'm saying? So basically, like I said, niggas strip you down to all that, cut your hair off. Now they put you in them greens, put a number on you. Now guess what? All y'all niggas look alike. So the psychological warfare that they playing is like this. You came in there, you supposed to be this, you supposed to be that. But here go this child molester, here go this rapist, here go this fucking crackhead. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all all the same motherfuckers. Y'all all in them state greens, y'all all got the same haircut, no, no hair on y'all face. Y'all all fucking farm animals. Going into the big farm, and you it's just like a farm. You going into the big farm, you're an animal on the farm, you produce your motherfucking whatever you produce, they get whatever they could get off you, and with a collection of all of the farm animals, they make a living. You understand what I'm saying? And a profit. So it's the same thing with the penitentiary. So after they finish doing all of that psychological shit to you and stripping you down and all of that, that shit damn near broke me down too. Matter of fact, I ain't even gonna say damn near. Them niggas threw me in a cell and locked me in a cell after all of that shit, nigga. I had to shed a tear, my nigga. I'ma keep it real with you, bro. Because I was humiliated. You feel what I'm saying? Like, they humiliate you with that shit. You feel what I'm saying? You feel humiliated standing there, no facial hair, no hair on your head. I got a big ass scar on the side of my head from when I bust my head open and was, and was in a coma when I was a kid. That's coming in the life story. I'm gonna tell y'all how all that shit went down. Like I said, that shit is humiliating, nigga. I was sick to my stomach. I was sick to my stomach. I ain't know where the fuck I was going, where I was at. Shit was crazy, maxi max, futuristic type jail that downstate is designed like. That shit was fucking with my mind. I was sick. I was sick as a dog, nigga. Know what I mean? I wanted to go home, nigga. I wanted my mother. 
Real talk. I was 17. I was 17. I had just turned, I turned 17 in June. You feel me? Like that, this was like fucking uh, November or some shit like that. You feel me? October or some shit like that. Feel what I'm saying? So I had just turned 17. I was a fucking kid, my nigga. All them cells and fucking wild ass, big ass police barking in niggas' ears. That, that shit was too adult like for me. You feel me? That shit had me fucked up. But anyway, them niggas end up sending us to our blocks. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And like I said, I was in the dorms on the island. I never went to the Bing on the island. I went to the box up north, but I never went to the Bing on the island. So when them niggas threw me in that motherfucking cell, that downstate cell for the first time, and closed that cell door, my nigga, shit hit different. Know what I mean? I had never been in a cell house. That shit, when you ain't never been in a cell, my nigga, downstate ain't the, ain't the right cell you want to be in for the first time. That jail is motherfucking quiet time at 9 o'clock, mad strict, got a little slot on the side, got like a little hole you could pass like a milk or an apple through, and then there's a little slot where they could pass like, you know, like letters and shit through, it's not big, it's not big like that at all, you could fit like half your arm through it, you feel what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, when them niggas lock that cell and you hear that motherfucking uh, electric lock lock, and you know you in there, my nigga, it's a wrap, Now I mean, them niggas threw me in that cell, I was stressed the fuck out, my nigga. I ain't know what jail I was going to go to. Nobody know what jail they going to go to yet because they classifying you to see which jail you going to go to. That was the entry day, my nigga. I'm laying down in my cell looking like a motherfucking, a new draft in the army. Downstate, it be a lot of motherfuckers that be coming um, from up north to go back down to the island for other open cases they got. So they got to go back down to court or medical. So they'll put you in state greens and send you back down to downstate. One of the first niggas I saw that was a nigga from up north. He was a Jamaican dude I met. His son had one of the craziest cuts I ever saw in his face. Big, stupid, bubble, shit, crazy bubble on his face. Know what I mean? I'm like, damn, my nigga, you got that shit up north? He like, yeah. Nigga caught me with a can top. I was like, what you mean? He was like, you can have cans. He said, I mean, if it's on, niggas would just open a can of beans or a can of tuna fish, bend that shit up like a, and hold it, make a knife out of it or something to cut. And niggas are cut. You said, this nigga caught me with a can top. Know what I mean? And his shit was gruesome. His bubble was so big, the shit looked like, I swear to you, it looked like a nigga took a snake and sewed it on his face. That's how thick and wide that shit was. Pause. You feel what I'm saying? But I saw that shit. I'm like, I'm like, damn, niggas taking niggas' heads off with motherfucking can tops up north? Shit dangerous up there. I'm going to tell you how I got caught with a banger in downstate. I ain't even get to a jail yet. I already got caught with a banger like a clown. Once again, I'm the youngest dude in my whole block. Know what I mean? Niggas is like, damn, shorty, you mad? How old are you? Know what I mean? Because like I said, I was 17 when I came up north. But I look 15. You understand what I'm saying? I look 14. So motherfuckers used to be like, damn, shorty, how old are you? So you know, I'm a young nigga. Niggas quickly take a liking to me. I meet a couple of niggas. You feel what I'm saying? My nigga Jeff from Queens. My nigga Heck. My nigga Heck was an ill nigga like. This nigga was from the Bronx. Son used to tell me straight up. He like, nigga, listen. He like, son, I'm in here for drugs, my nigga. And I never wanted to be a drug dealer. I was forced into the life of a drug dealer. Nigga said his moms used to wake him and his brothers and them up early in the morning. The same way a nigga surround around the table to eat breakfast. When them niggas was surrounding around the table in the morning, she was giving them niggas, she was cutting them niggas chunks of hard coke like this. Go to school, make that money. Go out on that block, make that money. We got bills to pay in here. Like my man used to be telling me that shit like, yo, bro, I ain't even had no childhood. I've been selling drugs my whole life. My whole childhood, I was a drug dealer. Like, and son ain't wanna be that. Know what I mean? So I never forgot about son because, know what I mean? He was living proof that everybody that sell drugs or do crime ain't just wake up and say, y'all wanna be a drug dealer. Some motherfuckers was born into that life. You feel what I'm saying? So that shit different for them, you heard? Yeah, so I meet my nigga Deshaun from Connecticut. We start trying to get it popping at night on the eats and shit like that. These niggas was like the only jail I ever been in that sold fried rice in a can. You feel what I'm saying? So we used to buy the fried rice in a can, right? And then on the way to child, we found out like when you go out to child, whatever, we found out these niggas was growing scallions 
in the grass, like on the walkway, like as as decorations, but they was real scallions, like onion scallions. So we found out it was scallions growing on the walkway. We was buying that fried rice in commissary. Niggas was risking going to the box to get them scallions, nigga. Like downstate don't play no games. Like you get caught doing anything you ain't supposed to do, nigga, it's a wrap. You understand what I'm saying? They writing you up. It ain't like a regular jail. So we going crazy trying to get them shits, nigga. We, when the police ain't looking, we be snatching them shits. Ying, throwing them shits in our pocket. Get back to the cell at night, chop them shits up, throw them shits up in the fried rice. Some niggas had hot pockets because some niggas had property and shit like that. That was there for a minute. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas used to be freaking seeing that fried rice with them scallions, boy. Shit was delicious, you heard? So then, yo. So then they move me, they start moving me around and shit. They move my cell next to this kid. They move my cell next to this nigga, right? The Spanish nigga, right? This nigga was, he an ex-gang member that, that used to be in a gang, but he don't fuck with the gang no more. And they don't fuck with him no more. You feel what I'm saying? So he the type of nigga niggas is staying away from because niggas feel like somebody gonna eventually pop his top off. So they got this nigga right next to me in the cell. You feel what I'm saying? I ain't gonna mention niggas' names and shit like that. So they got me next to the nigga in the cell, right? So like I said, I'm dumb young. I'm 17, just turned 17. This nigga a grown ass nigga, probably like 30 years old. You feel what I'm saying? So we be pollying sometimes, talking bullshit sometimes. The nigga type talented. He make all type of uh, artworks with all type of motherfucking uh, Cigarette Newport rappers and all type of foils and magazines and shit. He be making all type of artwork. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga was type talented, so we used to be pollying about that. Like, y'all might want to buy one of those off you, like little little picture frames he be making and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Type of shit niggas be making in jail. So we used to poly a little bit. As I kept living next to this nigga, he started getting a little bit too familiar with me. You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm fresh up north. I don't know shit about up north. I ain't even get up north yet. I'm in downstate waiting to go up north. This nigga start getting a little bit too familiar with me. So he start, you know what I mean? Just joking too much and playing too much and talking too much. And the nigga was on keep lock. So he couldn't come out of cell. Like he had a couple of tickets or whatever. So he couldn't come out of cell. Other niggas could lock out. So you know how niggas get when niggas be in keep lock. They start getting antsy and start beefing for wreck. And want to start running their mouth with motherfuckers from their cell. So that's the type of vibes he started being on. Like being an annoying ass nigga that was hating on the fact that we could go to the yard. You feel what I'm saying? And shit like that. So he was tight. Yeah, so this dude starts annoying me, man. Like he starts like playing too much and shit, right? So one day, we was all on the gate, running our mouths and ourselves, you feel me? So we talking about our chicks and our kids and shit like that. My baby moms was pregnant with my first kid. I was stressed. I was going up north to do six joints. Little did I know. And I left this chick pregnant, you feel what I'm saying? In the street with my baby, like, you feel what I'm saying? So I was stressed the fuck out, you know what I mean? And I, was, I felt like how every jail nigga feel when he locked up. And his broad is in the street. So the nigga who was in the cell next to me that was annoying, son had been up north before. He had did some time before. You feel what I'm saying? So we talking about chicks and up north in jail. And he like, yo, none of these bitches stay loyal. He like, yo, none of these bitches going, none of these bitches stay loyal when a nigga doing a bid. So like I said, I'm fresh up north. So I'm like, you nigga, my broad nine months pregnant. You know what I mean? I ain't worried about what she doing in the street. So this nigga, this nigga who I barely know getting too familiar, this nigga like, nigga, she gonna fuck, nigga. She gonna fuck. She gonna fuck, nigga. After she had that baby, after you be up north for like a year, she gonna fuck. Like I said, I'm fresh up north, my nigga. He may have been speaking facts, and he was speaking facts. But at the time, I'm I'm 17 years old. I don't know you like that, and you talking reckless about my, my baby moms. So he like, yo, nah, she gonna fuck, nigga. You crazy? That bitch gonna fuck. You feel what I'm saying? So now I'm like, I'm in my cell. We can't lock out right now. I can't lock out to tomorrow. So I'm like, this nigga is violating. Like, so when he said that, 
a couple of niggas on the tier start laughing and snickering like, yo, not me, yo, chill, son. Don't tell that little nigga that, son. You gonna have that little nigga stress. You feel what I'm saying? So niggas is laughing and shit. A couple of other niggas is like, yo, don't, don't listen to this clown ass nigga, my nigga. He don't know your fucking broad or, you know I mean, what she gonna do when, while you locked up? Don't pay that nigga no mind. So I'm in my cell. I'm like, yo, son, you playing with me too motherfucking much. Like, I'm talking to him through the, through the, he can hear me through the cell. I'm like, yo, you playing with me too fucking much, my nigga. You don't know me like that. He like, ah, right, nigga, shut up. Shut up, nigga, shut up. So I'm like, all right, say no more. That nigga had me so fucking tight saying that my baby moms was going to fuck. I was like, all right, this nigga going to get dealt with. So, so I'm so young and hot-headed. Like, yo, this nigga talking about my baby mom's gonna be fucking and all of that. I said, all right. So I ain't have no gun at the time. Well, I did have a I did have a banger. Like a clown. One of my one of the niggas who I got cool with in downstate, he showed me the banger one day. Like, yo, look, nigga, we got the pick. And I'm like, yo, let me hold that shit, son. Let me hold that shit. Thirsty to thirsty to hold the shit. I gets the shit and I puts it all the way in the middle of my mattress, right? I had only been in the cell a couple of days. I told you they moved me from one cell to the cell next to this nigga. And I mean, that was annoying. So I got the banger from my man. Young, stupid shit, holding bangers for niggas and shit like that. But I was thirsty to hold a banger because I was thirsty to see my first up north weapon. You feel what I'm saying? So I threw that shit in my, in my motherfucking uh, mattress, in the middle of my mattress, right? Damn near forgot that shit was there. So... I don't got no 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 razor. I'm like, yo, I wanna cut this nigga. Like, this nigga talking about my baby moms and shit, getting mad, reckless, and loose. I said, I got something for this nigga. So I had a bubble razor, a shaving razor. You're not supposed to break those razors. They check them shits once a week, make sure to give you new ones. And if your shit is missing, they writing you up, my nigga. But I was so mad, niggas told me that. Like they tell you that when you come in, like, yo, man, I was so mad, I didn't give a fuck. I broke the bubble razor out. You understand what I'm saying? Melted. Broke that shit, turned it into two blades, melted that shit into a toothbrush. The key with bubble razors so that they're effective and they don't just break like trash through the razors is you can't have the blade all long sticking out the plastic. You got to have only a little bit of the blade sticking out the plastic because it's a flimsy ass razor. So when you stuff it all the way down into the plastic, it becomes sturdy with just a little point sticking out and then it'll cut the shit out of something. So I melted the motherfucking bubble razors into, into a toothbrush, wowing out. This is how heated this nigga had me. You feel what I'm saying? For telling me the truth. So boom. You know what I mean, I slept on the shit, and the next morning, I might have woke up and said, all right, I'm going to chill the fuck out. I might have did that. You feel me? But nah, this nigga wakes me up, beating on my wall mad hard. Boom, 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 like doing beats and rapping on my wall. It's like 8 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yo, my nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? He like, yo, nigga, wake up, nigga, wake up, time to get up. Like I said, he on keep lock, so he be just thirsty for wreck. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas like us, we could go in and out. You feel me? So he banging on my shit, boom, 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 rapping and shit. I'm like, yo, my nigga, stop banging on my fucking wall. It's 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck is wrong with you? A nigga like this, nigga, shut up, nigga. Shut up, little nigga. Right? Because he older than me and shit. So I said, all right, if I was going to chill, now I'm not going to chill. I had the bubble razor, right? So boom. I ain't say shit. I said, I'm going to rock this nigga to sleep. So I start talking to the nigga in about 20 minutes. I'm like, yo, son, yo, you still making them picture frames and shit? You feel what I'm saying? So he like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I made one of them shits last night. I see, he's like, yo, I'm going to show it to you when you lock out. I said, I right, bet. I want to see that shit because I need one of them shits and I need one of them little shoes. He used to make like little shoes. I'm like, yo, I need one of them little shoes that you be making too with the Newport packs and shit like that. And I mean like, all right, all right. I could do that. Give me a day. I do it. I said, all right, when I lock out. Show me which ones you got, you feel me? So he said, I right, bet. I'm like, yeah, this nigga's a rap. You feel what I'm saying? So like in downstate, like I said, it's a small slot. It's like a little circle where a nigga could stick like an apple or milk through. And then the slot, like you get your mail through or whatever. But you could get your arm through there if you got a skinny ass arm. You feel what I'm saying? But the average arm is not going to get all the way through there. You so I'm in my cell thirsty for the lockout. This nigga playing with me. First of all, like I said, the nigga was beating on my wall mad early in the morning. I was dumb tired. Yo, I can't wait for them niggas to call the lockout, call the yard, something. You feel what I'm saying? This nigga right here violating, like, talking about my baby moms. Then you waking me up 7, 8 in the morning beating on my wall like I'm some type of clown or something like that. I said, all right. So, boom. 
So they lock us out. So I come to the nigga cell, I'm like, so I'm like, yeah, my nigga, let me see them joints. So he goes in the back of his cell to go get some samples for the joint. I'm thirsty. I got the razor in my hand. The nigga comes back to the cell. He got the shoe and the picture frame. He like, yo, look, I just did this joint yesterday. You know what I mean? He like, look. He like, yo, look, I just did this joint yesterday. Me being thirsty and not being patient for the nigga to come all the way up to the door. When he was almost at the door, I reached through the door and tried to cut the nigga with the bubble razor. Wong! You, the nigga jumped back. Shit cut down his shirt. So the nigga looking at his shirt, he like, hey, yo, be real. The niggas used to call me be real in downstate. Nigga like, yo, be real. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. I said, nigga, keep my motherfucking baby moms out your motherfucking mouth, nigga. I said, and bang on my motherfucking wall like that again, nigga, and watch you get dealt with. So he like, yo, that's fucked up, be real. I thought me and you was peoples. I thought, I said, nigga, we ain't no fucking peoples, nigga. I said, you don't know me like that. Keep my fucking baby mom's name out your mouth. So the nigga ain't right on me. The nigga ain't right on me right away. So then this nigga, he already on keep lock. He gets escorted somewhere with, with police to go do something. You know what I mean? While he on keep lock, a medical or something. So he walks past the box block, right? So niggas in the box in downstate, yo, 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 my nigga, yo, pass me a cigarette, pass me a cigarette. You know, niggas in the box starving for a cigarette. So this nigga, while the police not looking, he tries to pass a cigarette through the window to a nigga in the box, like through a little part of his window where he could get the cigarette. And the police caught the nigga. Nigga cuffs that nigga up. Yo, you going to the box. It's downstate. You can't do none of that shit in downstate. Up north, you might get away with shit like that. But in downstate, nigga, you ain't getting away with none of that. Them niggas cuffed that nigga up like, you going to the box, right? So instead of going to the box, this nigga rats on me. He like, yo, this nigga tried to cut me. He tells the police, yo, this nigga tried to cut me the other day. He got a razor in his cell. So while I'm in the yard, these niggas go in my cell and start searching my cell. They looking for the bubble razor. They find the broken up pieces of the razor or of the bubble razor, but they don't find the actual razor blade with the toothbrush shit because I got that shit crazy stashed. You feel what I'm saying? So them niggas call me from the yard. I'm in the yard. They call my name. I'm like, the fuck? I come back to the shit. They like, yo, police like, yeah, go to your cell. They got a cell search. I go to my cell, my nigga. They found a the motherfucking banger that I had stashed in the mattress. You feel what I'm saying? They ain't found a bubble razor, but they found a banger that I had stashed in the mattress. So now I'm like, oh man, it's a wrap. He like, where, they like, where did you get this from? I'm like, yo, that's not mine. They like, of course you're gonna say that, throw the cuffs on me. I'm like, yo, I just came into this cell a couple of days ago. That's not my shit. I didn't check the mattress. That shit, I ain't know that shit was in there. They really couldn't prove that I had it, but they ain't give a fuck. They still wrote me up for the shit. So they like this. They like, you going to the box. So me thinking this is Rikers Island in the M.O. house where you could just threaten to hang up and they be like, all right, then don't hang up. We put you in a regular house. I'm thinking they give it up like that. Those type of vibes. I'm like, yo, nigga, you put me in a box. I'm hanging up. I'm 17 years old. I'm telling the poor. I said, you put me in a box. I'm fucking hanging up. You feel what I'm saying? Just running my mouth so that they don't put me in a box. So the nigga was like, oh, word. Oh, you're going to hang up if I put you in a box? Yo, send him to the M.O. block. So I'm like, yeah, nigga. This shit work. They gonna send me to a regular ass block, not me, and I'm just gonna be in there chilling with regular ass niggas fronting like, I can't live in a box or something like that. You feel what I'm saying? Boy, was I mistaken, my nigga. Niggas threw me in the real MO house, you heard? This ain't adolescence trying to get out the bing. This was real MO niggas, you feel what I'm saying? My shit come up in there, nigga. Niggas looking crazy. I'm like, nah, nah, they ain't putting me in here. Yo, bro, niggas looking crazy, my nigga. They, they lock niggas out to go to, out, go to chow to eat. I sit down, I'm like, all right, maybe this shit is in my mind. Maybe these niggas ain't really crazy. You feel what I'm saying? They, it's just, I'm, it, I know it's the crazy block, so it's in my mind. So I sit down, I'm talking to a couple of niggas. Now I mean, I'm making small talk with niggas. Yo, what they, what they, what they serve chow in here? Da, 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 Cause these niggas don't go to the mess hall. They eat in. So I'm talking to a nigga. Now I mean, a nigga like yo. Now I mean, yeah, they give chow blah, blah blah. I'm like, see, this nigga's a regular nigga right here. 
He don't sound crazy. He sound like a regular nigga. He telling me what they have for child, shit like that. That nigga just, while we was eating, that nigga just leaned over and whispered to me like, yo, Noriega is after me. I'm not really a prisoner. I'm just in here hiding from Manuel Noriega. He got spies and operatives. They out to kill me. There's some of them in this jail. I'm like this. They got to get me the fuck out of here, my nigga. This other nigga, white nigga, talk about Ozzy Osbourne is God. Nigga just keeps saying that shit over and over. Well, Ozzy Osbourne is God. I'm like, yo, these niggas got to get me the fuck out of here, my nigga. Niggas was mental, mental. You heard? Niggas was so crazy up in the spot. Niggas was looking so crazy. Niggas was making mad noise. Police had to um sit up on the tier every night and check niggas' cells to make sure they ain't hang up. They ain't let you get no blankets or no extra shit that you could possibly hang up with. I'm in the cell. You understand what I'm saying? Cole is a motherfucker. Not mean, because them niggas don't give you no blankets or no sheets. I'm like, my nigga. They got to get me the fuck out of here. Niggas in there saying all type of crazy shit, making all type of weird noises at night. I'm like, my nigga, they got to get me the fuck out of here. Take me to the box. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm telling the police, I'm like, yo, can you tell the, the captain or whatever, you understand what I'm saying, that I'm not fucking crazy and, and, and get me out of here. They're like, yo, you, you got to wait till the counselor come in. Counselor don't come in to Wednesday. Shit like Saturday. I'm like, oh. I gotta stay in this fucking psycho house for another four or five days or whatever. Like, come on, my nigga. I can't do this shit. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm in there losing my motherfucking mind, my nigga. Now I'm really going crazy. Now I'm starting to wonder if I'm motherfucking crazy or not. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I gotta get out of here. When Wednesday came around, nigga, and that count, yo, I begged the fucking couch. So I was like, yo, I promise you, I promise you I'm not crazy. I'm like, call a captain, tell a captain to take me to the bing or do whatever the fuck he want to do. But please get me the fuck out of here. Because if I remain in here, I'm going to lose my motherfucking head. I can't sleep. Them niggas don't turn the lights off. They keep the light on all day so they can watch niggas in their cell that's suicidal. Bro, I can't do it. Take me to the motherfucking box. So niggas got me in the MO block. Like niggas said, the insane asylum where motherfuckers is really criminally insane. I was fronting, you feel what I'm saying? Learn my lesson from that shit real quick, nigga. So, I, like I said, I saw the counselor. I begged the counselor, I'm like, yo, please. I've never threatened no suicide shit again. I thought this was like Rikers Island. They was like, well, it's gonna take days to process paperwork, shit like that. Now I mean, see what happens. So boom, I'm like, damn. So then I go to the ticket hearing. I go to the ticket hearing for getting caught with the banger, right? And I'm gonna keep it real with you, my nigga. The luck of the universe was with me because I got a black captain or sergeant or whatever he was. And he was a young nigga. And that nigga was showing love. That nigga showed love. I'm gonna keep it real. I went to the hearing. The nigga was like, yo, man. He was like, because the kid that ratted on me, he was still in the block. He was still on keep locking the block. He was like, yo, man, like, why all these dudes love you like that in your block? He was like, yo, these niggas dropping slips. He was like, yo, your whole block dropping slips. Talking about if we don't get this dude off the block, they gonna kill him. Cause niggas was mad that he ratted on me and got me out the house. Cause I was the baby of the bunch. I was the youngest dude, so everybody loved me. And then I was a generous nigga. Like, whatever I got, I was I would show love to niggas. And we was, we was all in this together. We was like family in downstate. You feel what I'm saying? Me and my niggas, like. I forgot a couple of dudes names, man. One of my niggas was a mob. Was one of my niggas was an Italian mob nigga, man. Fuck is this nigga name, man? I forgot son name, man. That nigga gave me one of the biggest jewels ever like. He was an Italian mob nigga like. He was fucking with Gotti and all them niggas. You feel what I'm saying? The nigga was like, "Yo, he said, listen, one day I was stressing. I'm like, yo, my baby moms, my daughter, my moms, I was stressing. And he was like, yo, look, let me tell you something. This nigga was like a 50-year-old Italian nigga. You feel what I'm saying? He was like, yo, look, let me tell you something, man. He said, your baby mother, your kid, your moms, he was like, they in the streets. They're good. They got their freedom. They're good. He said, but you, you in the penitentiary. And you got time to do it. He said, so... What you need to do is forget about the fucking streets. He said, yeah, we love our family. We love our kids. He said, but when you're in here and you keep thinking about the streets, 
you're not going to be focused enough to do this bid and this bid is going to do you. He said, so I'm giving you some advice. Forget about your kid, forget about your baby mother, forget about your mother, and worry about yourself and surviving in here because you are you don't know where you're going to end up. You understand? He said, so snap out that depressed, sad, worried about people. He said, those people in the streets, they're not worried about you like that. You may think they are, but out of sight, out of mind. They know you somewhere safe or, or, or they think that you're safe. They, they out there, they're out there living their life doing what they do. Stop thinking about them and worrying about them and start concentrating on this time that you got to do. Real talk. That's what this mob Italian mafia nigga told me like. I was like, yo, that, that shit, that shit made me snap into some shit. You feel what I'm saying? And this wasn't the only time that a nigga would have to check me like that about some shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, so this hard, this, this black captain nigga, like nigga showed me stupid love. I'ma keep it real. He looked into my case. Now I mean, some started feeling sorry for me. He was like, yo, look, instead of sending you to the box, cause first of all, nigga shouldn't have been sending adolescents to the box anyway, my nigga. That shit is now illegal and banned. But what about niggas like me who got thrown in a box at 17 years old, solitary confinement? You understand what I'm saying? Shit almost made me lose my motherfucking mind. I'm sure that shit had long lasting effects that's still here today. What about me? Now that that shit is motherfucking banned and outlawed, what about niggas like me who was in the box and the bing, solitary confinement for months and weeks? You understand what I'm saying? Keep locked for months. I was in keep locked for months. You feel what I'm saying? What about me? So, bottom line is, the niggas showed me mad love. I, I argue that the banger wasn't mine, that it was in the mattress before I got there, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Nigga showed me love, and the nigga said, I'm not gonna send you to the box. I'm gonna give you 60 days keep lock, and I'm gonna send you back to your block and get this nigga the fuck out of there. Nigga showed me love, my nigga. Nigga sent me back to my block with 60, 60 days keep lock. You feel what I'm saying? And got this nigga, sent this nigga to another block. I walked through the dorm, niggas was cheering. Yo, be real. Be real, yo, yo, young blood, what's up, man? We thought we'd never see you again. Niggas was mad happy. Niggas down there picked me up on their shoulders and, and marched me through the motherfucking dorm. So yeah, they got that other nigga out of there. So I ain't see Sonny Downstate no more. You feel what I'm saying? Now, let's evaluate the situation. First of all, I was mad, young, and stupid because if I would have cut that nigga, Niggas might have gave me a new charge in downstate. Forget about it. I might have ended up in Southport box with a year in the box for cutting that nigga. You feel me? So it was mad stupid to let my emotions run crazy and put me in a situation where I could go to the box for a year. And I could catch a new charge. I let my emotions over a female, even though it was my baby mother. I let my emotions put me in that situation. So now I mean, now I'm keep locked up and shit. Tickets already on my record. Soon as I come up north, you feel what I'm saying? All because I let a nigga make me come out my character. And luckily, I was a 14-year-old face having ass nigga that they showed some leniency to and didn't send my ass to the now illegal and considered torture SHU, Special Housing Unit, AKA The Box. I'ma tell y'all niggas the story of my first time in The Box too. Shit was crazy, you heard? Yeah, man, so you know what I mean? I don't know how long I was in downstate, but I met some real good niggas in downstate. Like I said, when I came to jail, I had 0% muscle mass. When I first came to jail, I had 0% muscle mass. I couldn't do one push up, literally. Me and my nigga Deshaun from Connecticut, we start working out through the gate at nighttime. Yo, I mean, son do his push ups, I do my push ups. We going back and forth, trying to get ready and brolic because we know we going up north. You feel what I'm saying? I was twisted, nigga. I couldn't do one push up, but I started getting my shit together. Know what I mean? best nigga I met in downstate was my nigga Chino and this shit got me tight because I never bumped in the sun in the street son had a wild crazy case you feel what I'm saying crazy next level crazy case you feel me and we was in downstate together that was my motherfucking nigga he was I was like I said young a young nigga son probably was like at the time 27 28 that was my motherfucking triple OG you feel what I'm saying? The nigga Chino, I love him. He a Puerto Rican nigga from, I think some from Sunset Park or from Bay Ridge. I think he from Bay Ridge, matter of fact. You feel what I'm saying? That's my fucking nigga. And what got me tight right now is I, I, I was thinking about son and I looked son numbers up and his name up the other day in the inmate lookup and I see this nigga got a fresh 13 to life. 
You feel me? This nigga got a fresh 13 to life. So now I gotta write my nigga. And I mean, I'm gonna write son this week. Try to send him some pictures and a couple of dollars and shit like that. That shit got me tight, my nigga. Cause when I was with son, he had an eight and a third of 25. And the judge showed him extreme leniency with that eight and, eight and a third of 25. You feel what I'm saying? Extreme leniency. So, um, when I found out, I looked the other day, seeing he got 13 in life. I'm like, damn, my nigga. I ain't seen my nigga while I was in the streets. This was my fucking man. Funniest nigga on the planet, realest nigga on the planet. Shit got me tight, man. So yeah, like, I wasn't in downstate for too much longer. Know what I mean? But me and the nigga Chino, we was we was like brothers. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he was schooling me to up north because this was like son third bed. He was schooling me. Oh, this how the shit going to be, blah, blah, blah. Know what I mean? And we, know what I mean? I think, if I'm not mistaken, we used to keep correspondence. They used to let, they used to have inmate to inmate correspondence. I don't know if they still do that. But me and son used to write each other and all of that shit. Like, shit was crazy, my nigga. The nigga got that fresh 13 of life. I got to get out of my nigga immediately. Real talk. After a little while, they packed me up, like I said. And that's when I ended up in Oneida. You heard? That's next to Syracuse. And I'll go into the stories about that. You heard?